Hi kiddos, it's Miss Freitas time. How are you today? Hope you guys are doing great. So the next couple books that I read are going to be about animals if possible because, oh my goodness, uh, um, my class is doing an animal report from home uh, with their distance learning. So I wanted to make sure that we had plenty of animal inspiration. Okay, so this one is called A Time for Playing. <coughs> Backside has flamingos and front side has pa polar bears. I almost said panda. Polar. Polar. <laughs> okay, and this is by Ron uh, Hirschi, and the photography is by Thomas D. Mengelson. Nice. Alright. Well, let's enjoy a good book. <clears throat> Look at this great fox picture on the title page. All right, I'm going to turn the camera this way a little bit. All right. Follow a chipmunk on its busy summer day. Chipmunks nibble, chipmunks climb, and chipmunks scurry. Chipmunks are in such a constant hurry. Do they take time to play? It's that cute little guy. The nice stripes in his fur. Chipmunks run and chase, stopping to sniff ro nose to nose. Look at that. He's sitting on a thistle. Ouch. Play helps them know their neighbor. Play helps them know who is a friend. It's a little bit of a dark picture, but it sure is cute. You see that close? They're on wood, so they kind of uh, are camouflaged. All right. High up in the branches, tree squirrels play on delicate limbs. While playing, they learn they learn a path from tree to tree. Play helps them find a way to safety if danger comes near. Look how pretty he is. Ground squirrels play down in their burrows and out where the wildflowers bloom. When snow covers them, their homeland, they might run to catch up with a playmate or run to find shelter from the cold. He's standing up. That's so cool. That's called an Arctic ground squirrel. And this is an Eastern fox squirrel. Probably because of his beautiful tail. Elk calves gather together in meadows like soccer players waiting for the game to begin. But elk play in serious play. They must strengthen wobbly legs to outrun their predator, the great grizzly bear. Yeah, we don't want wobbly legs to protect ourselves. Got to get them nice and strong. There's the grizzly bear. Grizzlies search with their eyes and sniff the air too, hoping to find a meal or a wilderness river where bears can be bears. Down in the river, grizzlies can splash, run, and dive. That'd be fun to see in real life. These are grizzly bears with cubs. They then in the tall grass, grizzlies stretch in the sun and rub against one another to dry after grizzly bear fun. But no bears play like polar bears play. No bears dance like polar bears dance. White as the blowing snow, polar bears greet one another in frozen stillness and then their dance begins. Polar bears roll, polar bear, polar bears roll, polar bears arch long and strong necks. That's pretty cute, huh? Then they nuzzle and nibble like puppies at play. The polar bears dance together. They also dance alone, a silent ballet dance of the north in a faraway land. This is a sea otter. 
sea otters play when they swim diving for sea stars or a bright colored kelp crab. Neat. Just chewing on something. It's hard to tell what. I like the way he sits up top close to the water. So sweet. They play with their food to learn what is best, but when they play with one another, play can mean survival out on the cold ocean waves. Otters comb and brush one another in playful grooming until, nope, sorry, uh, in playful grooming up on the shore. It must feel good to an otter to be fluffed, to have shiny clean fur. This fluffy coat traps air within the otter's dense fur, insulating each otter from bitter cold northern seas. And this is a sea otter as well. Kind of camouflaged, huh? And here he is eating on top of the water again. River otters are sleeker, but have lots of fat too. They have no need for combing and brushing like their relatives out at sea. Always seeming to have time on their hands, otters play with one another in water and on land. Otters stand up and chirp and tease others in to follow or tumble and box like kittens in your house. Uh, river otters, two different pictures of river otters. Fox, foxes play with one another or chase birds they rarely can catch. They try to catch magpie, a trickster bird on the west. Pretty foxes. I think one of my students is doing a fox for their report. Kind of like a coyote, magpie, magpie tempts and teases from a distance like uh, distance that is safe. Then, fox tail fluffs and fox runs as fast as fox can run. Do magpies know foxes can't fly? Probably, I think they just like to tease them. They're trying to stay warm too, probably. This is a lion, baby lions. They're little. Play makes lions stronger. Zebras grow swift. <clears throat> and this is called a uh, Burchell's Zebras. Here's the name right here. Burchell's Zebras. Play helps baboons know one another, but you don't have to take a distant safari to see animals play. Hang a sunflower feeder up in your yard. Birds will arrive, but curious squirrels will too. This is true. They love bird feeders. It's like easy food for them. Squirrels will jump and squirrels will climb, and they will playfully discover one way or another how to get into what is not meant for them. Just like you, squirrels learn as they play. But maybe, just maybe, squirrels know it just feels good to play. The end. And I will check and see if it's testable. This was a book that was given to us by our benchmark program, so I want to see if it is testable for us. It's kind of a different program for testing. That's good. Play is good, isn't it, boys and girls? It helps us get stronger. It helps us grow. And then um, I feel like play for us, especially when kids go to recess, figure out what they're good at and what their bodies are capable of. And if they want to get better at dribbling a ball, they can practice. And if they have a game going and maybe they are disagreeing on if the ball's in or out, um, us humans have the skill of coming to an agreement. So not only are when you play, are are we as humans not you know animals don't really 
you know, once they battle it out, if they're going to fight about it, they fight about it. <laughs> but it starts with it starts playful and probably ends playful. But sometimes our games turn into uh, activities where we don't agree on what happened, or maybe one person thinks something is in and one thinks it's out, or maybe someone thinks there was um, a penalty of some kind in a game. And the goal is, especially when you're at recess or playing with friends and it's just for fun, just, you know, agree on, oh, okay, well, next time it should be out and I'll let it be in this time, you know, just come up with an agreement or maybe establish the rules to your games very well before you start. That always helps. And then um, I know uh, when my students play uh, ball wall or wall ball, well, I don't know how you guys say that, but they always have one person who's next in line and four square too the one person who's next in line gets to be the judge to say who's in or who's out because they just want to be in and it's it's pretty fair but you don't you don't pick the person who's who's your friend to you know you have to play fairly and make sure that whoever is out is out and whoever stays in stays in so working on fairness and working on um, following the rules and I feel like little humans, we love to play, but we also work on our people skills, on our communication. I think it's helpful. And if you don't work on it at recess, you got to work on it at other times. But hopefully, if you work on your communication skills and work out who's right, and or, you know, just make sure that everyone's on the same page with how to play a game, then that means it will transfer into other things that you do in your life and you'll be able to communicate with everybody. Your friends, your classmates, your coaches, your parents. And um, and then it's also nice to um, have gratitude. Maybe you finish playing the game and you say, good job. I thought you played really well today. You know, give a compliment. Say thank you for playing with me. Um, thank you for playing fairly. <coughs> the other thing you could say is... Um, you, you were really awesome, <laughs> like, you, you know, and you can work on, if you lose, you know, just say, oh, I wish, I hope I can do better tomorrow, <laughs> because it's not fun to lose, but usually when you play a game, there's a winner and a loser, and you want, you want to make sure you listen to uh, yourself, make sure that you are not a poor sport, and you just say, hey, good game. I want to beat you tomorrow. <laughs> you can still be competitive, but you don't have to be a sore loser. And then if you're a winner, you know, after we're done playing a game, you can make sure that uh, that you say, hey, good game. I thought you did good. I can't wait to play tomorrow. You just say something nice, but you don't rub in that you won. <laughs> in your face! I won! I beat you! That's not nice. That's not nice. You can do that in your head. <laughs> yes, a little personal, something like this. Yes. But you don't want to rub it in <laughs> that you won. Because everyone likes to win, and we don't like sore winners or sore losers. Okay, that's it for me. I'll find out if it's testable, and if it is, I'll make sure I type it up on our YouTube page. I hope you have a great day, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed the animal playbook. Have a great day, okay? Bye.